Spurgeon here with Revzilla, and in this video, we're gonna break down the LS2 Challenger GT helmet available at Revzilla.com. So what you're gonna see from the Challenger GT, this is gonna be LS2's new sport touring helmet, and it's gonna come in around the $300 mark. Now, there is gonna be a carbon fiber version available as well, and at $500, that will sit at the very top of LS2's helmet line. But what you're getting for the base Challenger GT, that $300 mark, you're getting a fiberglass composite shell with three different shell sizes and five EPS liners. Now the shell size breakdown for this, extra small to small for the first shell size, small or medium to large for the second shell size, and then extra large to 2XL for the third shell size. DOT EC rated, and we threw it on the scale in a large, comes in at three pounds, five ounces. So that's pretty decently lightweight considering the price point in which you're shopping at. Um, very impressively aerodynamic with this, and from an internal fitment standpoint, it is gonna be intermediate oval to slightly long oval. So a little bit longer front to back, a little bit shorter on the side of the head. Works for the majority of the American market, especially if you need a little bit more room at the front and the rear of the helmet. Now as we work our way through this, one of the things that really impressed me is the mass amount of ventilation that we're getting, especially with a sport touring helmet. It's gonna be extremely comfortable to use in a wide variety of riding conditions. If we look at the front, You've got the actuation for the chin vent down below. That works really well, considering that you have this latch for the uh, for the face shield, which is right in the middle. A lot of times if you have that middle latch point and you've got a, uh, a vent right below it, you end up hitting the vent while you're trying to get that face shield open and closed. So I like what they did with this by moving that vent actuation down. Now the face shield itself is a pin lock ready face shield with a pin lock insert included in the box. The other cool thing that we're seeing from LS2 is that the gasket for the face shield is one solid gasket all the way around. There's not a break point the way that we see with some other gaskets. So what you get is a really tight, secure fit around the gasket. So you don't get a lot of wind noise when this is in the closed position. Now we're talking about the vents at the front on this. The one thing I will say is that the actuation for this top brow vent is kind of a pain in the butt to use when you have a glove on. Um, I would have loved that tab to just sit out a little bit further, but just keep in mind that when you're using this one, probably gonna be easier to figure out if you want that vent open or closed before you start you know, riding, because it's gonna be a lot easier to do when you're sitting on the side of the road looking into a mirror than when you're actually trying to do it while you're riding. The rest of the vents on top, super easy to use while you're riding. You have these gnarled tops to the vents itself, and you can easily reach up with a glove on, get those open or closed. With the back vents, your rear vents on this, they are gonna be active, which means you can open or close the rear vents as well. Little spoiler on the back. The one thing I will say, the fit and finish, is really impressive for what you're spending. Again, around that $300 price point. I like the matte finish on this. It's extremely similar to what we're seeing HJC do with their Arphalon. You know, they're stepping up in quality a little bit and you're getting into a much nicer feeling helmet than some of the lower level LS2s. They're really stepping up their game with this. Now, if we open that face shield, you'll notice that there is gonna be a drop down sun visor on this. And the one thing that I will say, it's about 90 millimeters uh, top to bottom probably one of the largest drop-down sun visors that we've seen yet. So a lot of times we complain because the drop-down sun visor doesn't go down far enough. This has a really solid coverage point to it and it doesn't really interfere with the bridge of your nose. Now the nitpick here is that if you notice where the actuator is for this, it sits where you would normally place a comm system. So LS2 does make a proprietary comm system, the Lincoln system, and that works perfectly with this helmet. If you try to use another manufacturer's comm system, that's where you can get into problems because there's no real great place to put a sticky mount on the side. And if you wanna mount it like a, like a traditional mount to the side of the helmet, you almost have to go up really far to the front or really far to the back. So I would have loved to have seen them put this actuator in a different place. But just keep in mind that Lincoln system from LS2 is made by Cena. So it isn't a no-name brand. They have got Cena making their systems for them. Working around to the back, again, just the LS2 logo at the back of the helmet. What I really wanna get into is the inside of the helmet. Now, the first thing you'll notice is that it is gonna be a ratchet strap. And this is divisive. Some guys love this, some guys hate this. It really is gonna come down to personal preference. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of the ratchet strap. I would much rather have a double D ring or something like we're seeing from Climb with the Fidlock system. But there are a lot of people that really like the simplicity of this. So again, not a good thing or a bad thing, but it is gonna be a divisive move depending on what your personal feelings are. Now the neck roll on this and the chin curtain is gonna be one solid piece. And you'll see as I pull this out, you have pops of reflectivity that are working all the way around. 
Um, so just that little bit of extra visibility there, but when you're trying to pull this in, you can't use the chin curtain without using the entire neck roll. So that's one solid piece that we're seeing there. And then getting into the inside, you're gonna have removable cheek pads. You have the emergency tabs right here, so they are gonna be the quick release emergency cheek pads. Really great contour to this, and they are gonna be washable. Really, I would say that there's nothing overly impressive with this. It's just gonna be a regular sweat wicking cheek pad. Um, and again, easily removed if you wanna wash these. The one thing I wanna point out as we get behind this, you know, earlier I mentioned that I didn't really enjoy the placement for the, uh, for the actuation for the sun shield. And the reason I didn't like that is it kind of limits you to using the proprietary system for this for a comm unit. But what I do like is that they do have the, uh, the speaker pocket cutouts for speakers. I would have liked to see them a little bit deeper. Um, they're a little bit shallow for my personal taste, but they do the job. And then you'll also notice what they do is they have little channeled cutouts into the EPS to run the, the wires all the way down too. So they have given you some thought to actually integrating the comm system into this much more so than we've seen from other manufacturers to the point where if you look around to the, uh, the front of the chin bar, they actually have a little indentation at the front to allow for easy use of the microphone system. A lot of times when I place a microphone in the helmet, I feel like it's pushing right against my lips or actually up against my nose, depending on where I position it. So the fact that they had this little cutout, this little channel here, really does a great job of allowing you to use the microphone without having the wires get in the way. And I say that because you even have this little channel where the, the wires can run as you run this back underneath the cheek pad. So very thought out for a comm system, again, the only real limitation there is you are gonna be um, you know, probably leaning towards the proprietary link-in system from LS2. Pulling out the rest of the liner, you will see that this is gonna be a brow vent, or a brow mount rather, so you have no undue pressure points, no little pops that are gonna give you uh, pressure in the top or the back of your head. You know, the one thing I like here is that a lot of times we'll see the manufacturers do the brow vent or the brow mount at the front, but they still put snaps in the back. This actually mounts up into the uh, the outer shell where the outer shell and the EPS meet. So you really have no pressure points to worry about with the liner itself. Now we talked about the ventilation earlier. The one thing I would have loved to have seen, and I can kind of just spin this up, is just some deeper channel cutouts to the inside of this. So you have got some great venting working around you know, the shell itself, really easy to actuate aside from that one at the brow. If we would have just seen a little bit deeper channels, I think that would help to promote airflow a little bit better. But considering this is a, uh, a first step into a premium level sport touring helmet from LS2, I think they did a really good job. Um, again, just kind of rounding this out, you've got great aerodynamics, you've got a really fantastic drop down sun visor, uh, you do have that pin lock insert included in the box, and with the seal on the gasket for the sun shield on, or the, the face shield on this, you get a really quiet helmet. Again, some of the nitpicks are the fact that that actuator does kind of come into play for using a non-proprietary comm system, um, and then that vent at the top isn't gonna be the easiest to use while you're actually riding. And the channel cutouts on the inside could have been a little bit deeper. But I think when you're weighing everything that LS2 has brought to the table with the Challenger GT and the fact that it's coming in around that $300 price point, you do have the option to bump up the carbon fiber, but even for around the $300 mark, you're getting three pounds, five ounces in a large. I think this is gonna be a really impressive helmet for that middle level sport touring shopper. Now, for those of you out there that want a little bit more information from other riders who are currently using LS2, now is when you can click the info button on your desktop or mobile device. You can read other rider reviews from folks that are already out there putting the LS2 Challenger GT helmet through its paces. And as always, if you have additional questions as to which helmet is right for you and your riding style, you can reach out to one of our gear geeks at 877-792-9455 or simply shoot an email over to cs at revzilla.com. I want to thank you for joining us for this look at the LS2 Challenger GT helmet. I'm Spurge. Enjoy the ride.